Hello, avid readers, book nerds, and casual observers, and welcome to the read along brought to you by the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna, and today we're talking about The Light of the Midnight Stars by Rena Rossner. All right, welcome to part 19. Part 19. Um, real quick, go check out our Patreon if you want to vote on our next read along. Uh, you'll have until the end of today when you're listening to this on release day, <laughs> which mm-hmm. is the 29th. Um, and then be looking for our announcement on the next book. Um, again, we're going over the last section of the book. It's very intense. If you haven't read this far, please stop. We will not be offended until you've read it and then come back. Unless you're planning on not reading it, in which case... You should read boo. it. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, with that said, um, the epigraph. The epigraph was a wonderful little bit of storytelling because we get to see Margita be tormented and this lady deserves to be tormented in my <laughs> humble opinion <laughs> mm-hmm. um so she's tormented by the aspen trees that grew where she tried to bury the boys um and she, they like whisper to her like they call her murderer and she hears babies crying and so she has the trees cut down and made into beds for her and her husband and he's like why did you do that? Those trees were great. They like made the sunlight really pretty in the morning and you ruined that. And she's like, we can plant other trees. <laughs> but then even the beds torment her. And so she has them burned. Mm-hmm. And from the burning beds, there's there are two sparks that go into the river that are swallowed by fish that swim down the river that are caught and eaten by the boys. <laughs> who then jump into the river and swim away. Um, This reminded me, this is very silly, but it reminded me a little bit of the lady who swallowed a fly, who swallowed a frog to eat the fry, the fly (laughs) who swallowed it. (laughs) That like kind of storytelling where like, this thing happened. So to counteract that, we did this. To counteract that, we did this. And it like just becomes Mm -hmm. more and more ridiculous. That's how this felt in a very like fairy tale kind of way. You know what I'm talking about? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it did feel very fairy tale esque, especially since I was like, aren't they babies? <laughs> they just crawled out of this cave and ate some fish <laughs> and then swam away. <laughs> and then swam away as babies. Mm-hmm. But that gets talked about later too. It so. does. It does. Um, but first we have Hannah. Yeah, so after we have that epigraph, then we move into our Hannah chapter, and we find out Mm -hmm. that she's been staying with her parents, um, because Constantine is still away, Um, and they are sitting Shiva for Levana, Um, and she has gathered the Jewish men that they know of um, to sit Shiva with them. And it's sad, but it seems as though Levana's death has awoken Abba, because he's starting to pray and, like, do his... Like, what he used to do before they ran away. Mm -hmm. Um, And she has made the choice not to tell her parents about the babies, which I thought was interesting. I understood her reasoning, but also you could have more help. Yeah, it's one of those weird things where it's like, it's such a weird story to have to tell someone. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, by the way... (laughs) I dug up some babies and hid them in a cave, and the forest is taking care of them now. And they're your grandbabies. (laughs) Yeah. And they have stars on their heads. Um, Yeah. That's a a weird one. It's a weird one. (laughs) And they're also grieving and mourning. So the next day, she goes to check on the babies, and... They are gone. Gone. (laughs) They are not there. Gone. Um, She discovers that there's, like a underground stream at the back of the cave. Um, So she leaves the cave and she witnesses a fisherman catch two golden fish. And she like debates asking him if she's, if he's seen the boys and then she decides not to, because what a weird thing to ask someone if they've seen two babies in the river. Oh, she also swam. She like got into the river. That's how she left the cave. 
Because she was swimming, trying to find their bo- their bodies at the bottom of the stream or the river. Yes. I could not find them. Yeah. Um, so she's, like, kind of given up. <laughs> and she's walking away from the palace and the river. And she hears the shrieking. So um, these two fish have turned into two little naked boys in the in the palace kitchen. <laughs> Which is like a very funny and strange thing to have happened in the middle of this very serious part of the mm-hmm. story. Yeah. Um and they have stars on their foreheads. So we know that these boys are the babies, but they are grown. They are, they are Lavana's kids. Mhm. And uh Hannah gets to use some of her clout from being Constantine's wife. Yes. To get in there and demand that they stop whatever they're going to do. Like, I, I think they were probably, I mean, they were under the impression that these were like demon spawn, right? Right. And they're like, ah, oh, kill the demons. Yeah. <laughs> so very much like, uh, no, don't do that. And I am going to need an audience with the king and his son, Nicholas. And I also, want these guards to take me... And yeah, the king's name is Basarab. If you were Basarab. in the last episode and I thought, I was like, his name is not Barabbas, but that's the only name that came to mind. It's Basarab. Yeah, Basarab. <laughs> um, yeah, she's like, I need an audience with him and I'm going to handle the situation. Yeah. So her and the kids and those guards go to the audience chamber and the guards, the guards actually, well, she's, she's like talking to the guards and asks basically like, are you going to, uh, like betray me or something or like will you stand up for me and they're like we do anything for Constantine's wife and I was yeah. like oh that's nice of them yeah yeah I'd like to know which of the guards were part of the Laptitsa murder so I could not like them I'm a little annoyed that I can't tell which guards are I mean they were yeah. working under orders but also like we never know though no one's, was. no one's gonna stand up to like this obvious heinous crime of burying the prince's wife alive? Okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but Anna, she was a demon <laughs> Jew. <laughs> Duh. Racism. Yeah. <laughs> Anti-Semitism. Uh, well, yeah. So Heavy, heavy um, sarcasm. Um, oh, yes. I should clarify. <laughs> I'm not um, an anti-Semite. <laughs> not at all. Um, we do get an explanation for why she thinks the boys have grown. And it's because of that prayer she said when she first dug them out about wanting them to grow strong and tall. Um, Mm -hmm. so she thinks that's what's accelerated their growth. It could also be that they're star babies. (laughs) Yeah. Um, or a combination of the things, but, um, yeah. So she's standing before the royal family and she's about to start talking and then the boys speak for themselves. Up until this moment, they've been totally silent. Um, I didn't think they knew how to speak because, you know, they're technically... Infants. Like, days old. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, they explain that um, who their mother was and what... That she's with the stars now and... Um, yeah, explain in a very, like, kind of cryptic way. <laughs> like a star would. <laughs> Um, or like Lovana's children would, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and Margita calls the boys a curse, and Basarab calls them a blessing, which was a beautiful moment, I thought. Like, I'm so mm-hmm. glad that someone is accepting of you. And then... And he, even, he even says, like, I, I started this country to be, like... A, Free, free for everyone to practice whatever religion. Like every, mm-hmm. everyone, anyone can live here. That's the whole point. Because I came from religious persecution, and that's the last thing I want to have happen under my name. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like, and this, and this happened under my own roof. Yeah. And he's like, how did? Why did this happen? And she's like, well, uh, th- they are demon babies. I wanted to get rid of the demon babies. And he's like, you are so wrong. And she is. Yeah. Um. So, and then Nicholas asks. Where is La Pizza? And this is where we learn that Margita has been lying and telling him that she has just run away. And Hannah is just, like, absolutely not going to stand for this. 
and tells them what actually happened and what Margita did to her. And Basarab, without even thinking, it takes him no time at all. He's like, Margita, you are going to be imprisoned back in that monastery where you should have been this entire time. And, <laughs> um, yep. and he is just like abhorred with what she has done. Like it is just terrible. And it's so nice to finally see some people with some common sense. <laughs> uh-huh. um, and Nicholas is such a good egg. He was like, you boys are going to come back into the palace. I will raise you. That's what your mother would have wanted. That's what we had planned on happening. I am so sorry. And then the boys are like, well, actually, we want to like go to this place in the mountains where we've heard that there's a man with fiery red hair. And he's teaching. From who? heard from who right that's what i want to know that is my question these babies who are days old have heard of a man in the mountain but they said we are we are only days old we look like we're 12 but we have the wisdom of like what they say like 39 or something right like they're they're star children they're not operating on the same plane as the rest of us it was just funny because i was like where did you hear this from no one else knows about this. But here's my question. Do you think the man in the mountain with fiery red hair is Gavriel? 100%. Me too. And it just makes me sad because Sarah could have been with Gavriel this whole time. <laughs> he lived and he went off and started his own little thing. Probably with the Torah that he saved. Yeah. And some other people. Yeah. And uh, that's where the... The red-haired mountain Jewish people, the Solomonars, mm-hmm. come from. Yeah. So, I think Gavriel's still alive, and it's really so sad too. that. I, know. I mean, spoilers for the rest of the section. But Sarah <laughs> does not end up going mm. ever seeing him again, no. according to what we've read. So. Right. No. But, but it made me happy to like find out that he's alive and he is thriving and still like carrying oh, yeah. on with the traditions. Like that was oh, really. Yeah. That was wonderful to hear. Yeah, and so they asked that they be provided with horses to get there. And Basra was like, mm-hmm. whatever you need. Absolutely. Whatever you need. Yep. I was like, wow, look at these dudes coming in clutch. Finally. <laughs> Finally, some people with some sense. And compassion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then we had kind of an unexpected little Levana chapter. She's a star now. She's joined the firmament, um, which is what she's always wanted. Mm-hmm. And she witnesses Margita um, climb the steps of this monastery and call out to Radu, who is her first husband, the black dragon. The black dragon. Um, and gets no answer. And, like, that kind of feels like poetic justice. Kind of mm-hmm. here, here for it. <laughs> Get wrecked. Yeah. Margita. Margarita. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have a, a series of very short chapters here to kind of, or like short sections to kind of wrap this up. So then we go to Sarah Theodora and she can't go to her sister Shiva or send word to her parents without like revealing themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we find out that she like defends Ivan Alexander when he goes to war. Because she turns into a white dragon that will show up and help him. Yeah. So she gets to use her powers, which is nice. But But why for him? Because that's who she's married to now. I guess. I know. It's despicable. He is despicable. I hope he doesn't last that long. Maybe. (laughs) Right. (laughs) She, like, defends him not as well one day, and he gets taken <laughs> out. Uh, uh, okay, so anyway. now, now we go back to Lavana and... And Margarita <laughs> takes a tumble off the cliff. <laughs> she throws herself off the balcony, and as she does so, Lavana says that she also falls, which harkens back to what Nicholas says about a falling star being an omen of death. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, um, like, while she's watching Margita climb, she laments how motherhood was stolen from her. And then mm-hmm. she also laments 
how she wasn't allowed to choose her own end. Like, yep. we get the impression that had she been left to her own devices on that balcony that night, she would have jumped. Mm-hmm. And it would have been a far swifter end than what she faced. And, um, yeah. She also had, there's like a little bit of Song of Songs in there. Um, I saw where that, Where she's yeah. reunited with her star man <laughs> in the sky. Gross. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm glad she's reunited with her love. Strange, I suppose. But... <laughs> uh, and then we have a weirdo. <laughs> and then we have a Hannah chapter. Um, the boys are giving her hope for the future, which is nice to see. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's like writing her family story. That's what her mission has become. Um, and when Constantine finally returns home, it's finally revealed that he was not there at all when Lavana was killed. Um, Mm -hmm. that he was away. And so Hannah has to catch him up. Um, and then she tells him that they have to leave. Um, and she's like expecting this to be goodbye. Like that this will end their relationship that she has to leave. And he tells her that he's going to go with her. Like he already got permission from Nicholas to protect the twins and he's already going he got assigned by Nicholas, like, you are now their protector. Yes. Like, <laughs> I'm so glad that at least one of, like, the two, I mean, like, had Lavana lived, Nicholas would have been a pretty decent husband. But, like, yeah, I'm glad that Hannah has a decent husband. Hannah and Constantine are great together. They are. They're very good. So that was lovely. That, like, made mm-hmm. me cry. Because like, we just want good things for these girls. And That's very nice. it has been really not great. Not great. <laughs> um, yeah. And then we have a final Sarah Theodora chapter where we find out that she and Ivan Alexander had five children. And when he dies, she just like, instead of retiring to a monastery like would have been tradition, she just hangs out with her kids and grandkids and lives her best life with her family. Mm-hmm. Which, that makes me happy. And, like, it does kind of a rundown of all the different kids, right? Like, Mm -hmm. one of the kids, one of the daughters can also turn into a, like, smoky white dragon. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, they've all got, like, they're, like, Power Rangers. I don't know. They've all got their own (laughs) thing. (laughs) They're, like, Power Rangers. (laughs) They're, like, Jewish Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, they have their. They all have their specialties. Of course, some of them become kings and queens and what have you. But yeah, yeah, ends up being a pretty family becomes pretty decent legacy. Yeah, yeah. We don't really get to know anything about what happens to Theodora, which I wish we would have gotten Mm. a little more closure on that front. I it's kind of just in my head that she probably just stayed as an animal for like the rest of her life. Maybe. Um, and just like flew around or ran around or did whatever. Yeah. Um, that's kind of in my head, but yeah. Yeah. Since that's when she was the most free, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, totally. Totally. I wish that she could just go, they could all just go back to the forest and mm-hmm. have picnics. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So. And that's, that's really, pretty much it for like the main meat of the story yeah there's one more little section which we're going to talk about in part 20 as well as the author's note um so yeah that's like the bulk Mm -hmm. we just have a little bit of falling action left not a lot yeah you already have quite a bit of it so i guess we will uh wrap this thing up and talk about those things and our whatever final thoughts we have in the next section so which is available now yes so go check it out (laughs) we'll see you in part 20 (laughs) yes until next time happy reading and we'll talk to you next time later bye